Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video on how to play the Mojo card game. This video is going to give you some instructions and some basic play ideas on how to use this uh, within the home or within the therapy setting. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you check out my other video on kind of the description of the cards themselves and kind of the idea behind the card game. So the game is designed to be played with two to four players. Uh, depending on how many players you have will depend on how you divide the deck. First you take out the six emotion category cards and place them between the players. Also there are going to be what to do on your turn cards, uh, which will be easy reference guides uh, for players as they play. Each player will have one by their side. Finally you have the 120 card deck. If you're playing with two players, you will divide that into two decks of 60. You can actually count out 60 each, or you can just divide it and make sure that they're even. If you're playing with three players, you'll have three decks of 40. And finally, if you're playing with two teams of two, you will have four decks of 30 cards each. So at the very beginning, kind of how you decide who goes first, simply take your six emotion category cards, choose one of them. We're gonna choose fear. We're gonna mix these up, and then the players will just take turns flipping over a card until one of the players flips over the fear card of that choice. Whoever flips over that card that was designated at the beginning is the player that will go first in the game. So to start with, each player will take seven cards from their deck and put them in their hand. And this will be the cards that they start out with. The first player who plays can do up to three turns, up to three actions during his turn. The first thing he can do is put an Emoto card in play. Now an Emoto card again is the character card that you have. To put an Emoto card in play, they would take that card out of their hand and put it face down. This card cannot be accessed or used to battle until their next turn. If it happens to be their next turn and they have a card in play, they can simply access it by flipping it over. By accessing it, they now have access to the special ability that is here on the bottom to use during battle. For example, this one says, Furious does not lose any intensity points after its first attack. And since intensity points are then lost after its second attack. So you can use this strategically on how you want to play that. You can also use an action card. I have a share your emotions card in my hand. If I didn't like the cards that were in my hand, I could play this. We would switch hands with the player and I would get their cards, they would get mine. Finally, you can just simply draw a card. If you don't like what you have, you simply draw a card. At the very end of your turn, you discard or draw to bring your hand back up to seven cards. If I do decide to discard some cards, these cards here become my discard pile or my spent emotions pile, which we will talk about later on in the game. If I am going to battle, which is one part of the game, I'm going to take my Furious card and I'm going to say battle, he has a Serene card here. I'm going to battle his Serene card that he has out. I can take this and I notice here that I have three intensity points. Those are the points I'm going to use uh, to attack with. He has three defensive points here. So if I attack with my three and hit him with three, then he goes down to zero. You do not actually capture one of their cards until they go below zero. If I hit him with three, he goes down to zero. He is just left uh, at a point where he is just defenseless. However, he happens to have a special ability here that says all fear, sadness, and anger cards lose one intensity and one defensive points when battling this specific card. So if I were to attack with Furious and attack Serene, I automatically lose one each and I drop down to a 2-2. So now I'm only doing two damage to him and he is left with one intensity point. When I use a card to attack, it doesn't matter how many intensity points I have, as soon as I use them, all intensity points are gone. So I turn the card sideways to indicate I have used all my intensity points. Now sometimes my kiddos, when we're playing, they can calculate in their head which cards have 
how many defensive points left, which cards have others. I, however, do not always have that ability. So we use counters. We can use coins. Uh, if I have two defensive points on him, I can put two on here. If he was knocked down to one, he would have one counter there. So next time I attack, I can know uh, how many defensive points each card has. You can also use macaronis. You can use dried beans. Uh, you could use those little clear marbles with the flat bottoms on them as well, if you would like. Now, as you're playing and you have a field of where your cards are, your opponent will have a field where their cards are on the other side. You can have up to five Emotos in play, either in play or accessed at one time. No more than five. So once one card is attacked and maybe defeated, let's say I was able to actually defeat Serene. Serene then goes into my opponent's emotionally spent pile, I would then gain control of the calm card out of the middle because Serene is a calm category card. As you're playing, these cards will go back and forth. If my opponent happens to be one of my calm cards, they would then gain access to the calm card. When all six cards in the middle are in control of one player or another, the first player to get four out of the six card wins. If one player's in possession of three, the other player's in possession of three, the first player to get up to four wins the game. And that is how you play Emoto. Let's talk a little bit more about how to play action cards while you are battling your opponent. We'll take Emotional Flood for an example. Uh, during your play, that says you force an opponent to show your hand. So they show their hand, you look at their hand and take two cards of your choice from their hand, add them to yours. You then have to discard to get back to that. Seven cards in your hand, they then have to draw back up to get seven in their hand. You also have an option, if you play this card, to draw three cards from your draw pile, again, discarding any cards in your hand to bring your hand back down to seven. So the Emotional Flood basically allows you to bring in more cards into your hand rather than just drawing from your deck. Uh, an Emotional Recall card. If you happen to have a specific card that you really like that has been defeated and has been sent to your Emotionally Spent pile, you can play this card and say, I want to recall a card from my deck. You go through your deck, find the card you want, and put it back into your hand being able to use it and its special abilities when you play the card uh, later on down the road. And you share your emotions card. Again, if you don't like the cards in your hand, you want to change them out, you play this card, you switch hands with the player that you want, you now get their cards, they get your cards. Now, if somebody plays one of these action cards and you don't like it, you don't want to show your hand, you don't want to share your emotions with them, uh, you can play what is called an emotional block card. This blocks any action card that anyone is playing. An emotional block card can also block an emotional block card. And what that means is if they play emotional block and say, I don't want to show you my hand, you happen to have an emotional block card, you can play an emotional block card, block that, and then they would go forward again. Now, another option that you have with the emotional block card is if you happen to have two of emotional blocks in your hand, you can play both of these at once forcing your opponent to lose their turn. Now this does count as two of the three actions that you are allowed to do during your turn. So let's say for example, you have a high level and a low level card in your hand. You're wanting to defeat maybe a high level card in their hand and you have these accessed, but they're, they're in play, but they're not accessed. So you use one of your turns to access a card. You use two of your turns to play two emotional blocks, forcing them to lose their turn. You play the two blocks, they lose their turn, you draw back up to seven, it's your turn again. You now have three more turns. You can access your Fondness card, and you now have a 3-3 three, three, and a 1-1. One, one. You attack with your 3-3, three, three, dropping his card down to possibly zero defensive points, and then attack with your 1-1, one, one, dropping him down to a negative one, then you can capture his card that way. So strategically, you can use that uh, in battle. 
If your opponent happens to have two emotional blocks in their hand, they can block the two emotional blocks by playing those. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, please make sure to check out my other videos as well as look down as links to where to find this card game online as well as other ways to find me on social media.